The lesson topic for this video is, I can write linear equations from given information. So mainly when you end up writing equations, writing linear equations, you will use one of these two forms. I don't think uh, we will ever write an equation in standard form, so we can kind of focus in on these two. And to be honest, even more so will be point-slope form versus slope-intercept form. And again, hopefully you're getting those. This is slope-intercept form. We have our slope and our y-intercept. And this over here is point-slope form. We've got our point from x1, y1, and we've got our slope here from m. So we're going to use these two forms to write our equations, and mainly this one. So for this first one, it says write the equation of a line that has a slope of 3 and a y-intercept of 7. So when we know our equation for slope-intercept form has slope and a y-intercept in it, that's the one we're obviously going to use. And that looks like this. Again, y equals mx plus b. So we're simply going to put our slope of 3 in for m. We're going to put our y-intercept in for b, which is negative 7. And so we've got y equals 3x plus negative 7. If you had written that as y equals 3x minus 7, that is just fine as well. Either of these answers works. All right, so let's try this second one. It says, write the equation of the line with a slope of 1 half that passes through point 4, negative 3. Now you might have noticed that in this example, we are given the slope again, but this time we're given a point. Well, if we're given a point and we know the slope, we probably want to write our equation in point-slope form. So I'm going to start by writing our general form for point-slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, which we learned earlier um, when learning to graph lines in point-slope form. So now what we need to do, of course, is we need to put our slope in for m. So we're going to go ahead and put that right here. And then what you have to be careful of is we need to put the 4 and the negative 3 in where they go here. And what I, um, first of all, remember that this is x and this is y, right? And we're going to actually use x1 and y1, and we're going to put those in for x1 and y1 right here. Because remember, that little subscript 1 means this is one example of a point that is on the line. So we're going to put 4 in for x1, that's right here, and we're going to put th negative 3 in for y1. So when we do that, we're going to write y minus, and the y1 value is negative 3 equals, we already have our slope in there, m is 1 half, and then we have x minus our x1 value, which is 4, and then we can close our parentheses. Again, I would recommend and request that you simplify this one step to get rid of the minus a minus situation right here. So we're going to go ahead and write y and minus and negative 3 will be plus 3 equals 1 half times x minus 4. Just to make sure you see this, uh, if, when we were graphing, we would take, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have circled that. When we were graphing, we would take our equation and we would write our point from here and here. And remember, when we wrote that point, I'll just do this on the side here, when we wrote that point, when we were graphing it, we would always take the opposite of this value. So instead of negative 4, we would write a positive 4 here. And we would take the opposite of this, so instead of positive 3, we would write a negative 3. Now you notice, this right here is what we started with in this example. So that is that same point that is on the line. So we have written the equation that has a slope of 1 half and that passes through 4, negative 3. All right, so this third example, write the equation of the line based on the given information. This one says it passes through 8, 2, and negative 9, 4. So if you kind of picture a graph, uh, 8, 2 would be somewhere right in this region and negative 9, 4 would be somewhere in this region here maybe a little further to the left, but right in there. So we know that this is the line right here. Okay, so you can kind of visualize. One thing I want you to notice here is it's going downhill, so when we write our equation, it better have a negative slope. Okay, so once again, thinking about the given information, we have a point, 
In fact, we have two. We can use either one. We have a point, but we need the slope in order to write this again in point-slope form. The other option, again, would be to write it in slope-intercept form. But to have slope-intercept form, we would need not only the slope, which we do not currently have, but we would also need the y-intercept, which we also do not have. So instead, point-slope form is the best option, and we need to know what our slope is. So we need to find slope. You might remember there's a couple ways we can find the slope. First of all, if you did actually graph this, you could just count your slope down how many and write how many, so rise over run, and that would be your slope. Or you can use the slope formula. Remember that the slope formula is m equals y sub 2, the second y value, minus y sub 1, the first y value, over x sub 2, the second x value, minus x sub 1. If we go up here and label this x and y and x and y and then put a subscript 1 for this point because it's our first point and a subscript 2 on the x and y here because this is our second point, that will really help when knowing what to input where. So y2 minus y1 is going to be 4 minus 2. And in the denominator, x sub 2 minus x sub 1 is negative 9 minus 8. And now we're going to simplify our slope. m equals 4 minus 2 is 2. And in the denominator, negative 9 minus 8 is negative 17. So there's our slope. We can now put that in right here, 2 over negative 17. If you could simplify that fraction, go ahead and do that. In this case, we cannot. And now we are going to fill in the other parts as well. Remember, to do this, we will put in a value for our x1 right here and a value for our y1 right here. Well, we already named our x1 and y1. x1 is 8 and y1 is 2. So I'm going to put my 8 here and 2 here. So this is our final answer. We wouldn't have to rewrite this, but I will all in one color. This is the equation of the line that goes through these two points. Our slope is negative, down 2, right 17, and a point that is on the line is 8, 2, which is right here. Okay, and the final type of example I'm going to show in this video is to write the equation of a line when given a graph. So, remember, there are two main forms we're going to use, well, not even two main forms, just two forms of lines that we're going to use to write our equation, and they are slope-intercept and point-slope. Now, you might be thinking slope-intercept would be pretty easy to use here, and it would be easier because we just have to find our slope from the from the line shown, which means we could just count our rise and our run. Um, and then we would just have to find the y-intercept on the graph as well. So that does sound all well and good, but I want us to work on um, another way of doing it as well, especially when our y-intercept cannot be found exactly by looking at the graph. If you look at this line, where does it cross the y-axis? Right here. By the way, you can see that that is not negative 3, but it is also not negative 4. It's also not negative 3.5. It is somewhere between 3.5 and 4, negative 3.5 and 4, I should say. Um, so we don't have an exact answer for our y-intercept. So instead of guessing or making a, a you know, guess there, we are going to use a different method instead. And that method is we are going to use point-slope form. And to do that, we're going to find two points on that line, and then we're going to write the equation just like we did on the previous example. So to find two points, what we want to do is we want to find two points that are exactly where two, well, where a vertical and a horizontal line on the grid meet. So again, we're not going to pick this point right here because it's not um, 
a quote unquote nice point. A nice point would probably be this one right here. Okay, you'll see that this one is at 3, negative 2, right where they cross. So I'm going to write 3, negative 2 for my first point. The second point I'm going to use, let's take a look here. I'm going to actually make 3, negative 2, make a point there. There it is. All right, and the other point I'm going to use, I'm not going to use this one right here. It's actually not right where they cross. You can see if you look carefully. But instead I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to use this point right down here. Okay, notice that that one is right where vertical and horizontal grid line meet. So that point right there is at negative 6, negative 7. Negative 6, comma, negative 7. So I'm going to use negative 6, negative 7. Well, now this problem has turned into exactly what the previous problem was, and that is filling in a point and a slope to write our equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my points x1, y1, and x2, y2. Remember, each point has an x and a y. So if I have my equation y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, get used to writing that, please, we are going to go ahead and put our x1, our x1 in for x1 here, and our y1 in for y1 here. So y minus y1 is negative 2 equals m and x minus x1, which is 3. Now we still need to know what our slope is. So we need to use the slope formula like we did in the previous example m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, or, which it is quicker this way, instead of using that slope formula, which we could do, instead we could simply count our slope. From here to here, how much do we rise? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our rise is 5. And our run is... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And there's our slope. Rise 5, run 9. Our final answer then will be y plus 2 equals 5 over 9 times x minus 3.